All right, guys, welcome back. Today's lesson is how to prepare for an appraisal. So I'm going to start at the very beginning from time of when property is going under contract. So a couple of things that I do in the MLS is in some cases, if I really want to meet the appraiser out of the property and I do not want any chances of missing him, I will turn off the showings. And that is because most of the properties that Tim and I sell are vacant. And so they're going shows on the MLS. Appraiser will just go in the MLS and schedule a showing. And, you know, he's there typically uh, sometimes same day. Most of the time the appraiser will call, but most of them are also looking at the property on the MLS. And if it is vacant or if it is a going show, I'll just schedule the show and go there and you'll never even know or see them. Now you'll still get the notification, but my point is, is that you may or may not be able to stop them once they've already scheduled the showing. So in some cases we will turn off the showings or put notes in agent remarks. Please have appraiser call, or you can also modify the uh, show assist to, um, not allow for any inspections, appraisers, anything like that. And all I do is I tell the uh, the appraiser, listen, the client just wants all showings to be accompanied from this point on. So I'll be flexible with you. What's your schedule? Give me a few dates. And that way I don't make it seem like uh, anything suspicious or that, you know, um, I'm trying to meet him and trying to give him comps and, and force things down his throat that he doesn't want. So that's where we're starting. So we're under contract with this one. I'm going to use this property as an example. So we have a four bed, two bath, estimated at 1,400 square feet, list price of 125. We've got a contract on this property for... And what do we have it for? It is literally right around there. I believe it's for full ask with a credit. So I'm pretty sure it's uh, one. It's full ask 125 with a $4,000 credit. So we're at a net of <clears throat> 421. Um, so first step is when we have a property like this, if I can get it to, uh, come on. There we go. When we've got a property like this that was renovated, you want to make sure that you're creating a sheet of all of the items that were done in the renovation. This helps give the appraiser a better understanding of everything that was done. Most of the time you can see the things that were done cosmetically, but sometimes you don't see things that were done behind the wall, insulation, electrical, plumbing work, um, things of that nature that should help the um, appraiser get a better understanding again. So we've got this property. Let's go to, we've got another window open up here. We're going to start with pulling the comps. I always start with uh, six months back one mile out. That's typically, this is an FHA uh, buyer, that's typically what appraisers are going to use as criteria for determining value and pulling comps. Appraisers are usually going to use one active, one contingent, and between two and three sold properties. That gives you a good snapshot of the market. I focus on the uh, solds are really the only thing that I focus on. If there are one or two under contract and the contract price is near what I'm listed for, or sorry, the list price is near what we're listed for at the 125, I'll also include that uh, uh, for the appraiser. In the event that uh, we're in maybe a little bit more of a rural area or there's not a lot of turnover, I do tend to start to expand that radius or even sometimes go further back in time. I personally feel like it's okay to go further back in time because the market is trending upward. So if I go back in time and I found something that has sold at or near uh, you know, my contract price, 
there shouldn't be any issues with using that. Since this is FHA, appraisers tend to be a little bit more uh, strict on using that six months back, one mile out kind of criteria. And that's what they have told me. Um, and also that's what I see in the event that I ever have an issue with the appraisal and I look at the report, I can see that they're typically not going further back than that six month timeline. So we wanna make sure, this is, this is a four bed, two bath ranch house. We wanna make sure that we're using the same home styles. I know in some neighborhoods this is significantly harder, specifically like Elmhurst or Glen Ellen where there is a ton of different home styles. But overall, in most neighborhoods, you want to use, or in, mo in most towns, in most neighborhoods, it is easy to find other properties that are similar home style, and then obviously bed bath we look for as well. So I'm looking at this one. We've got some lower sales. We're at the higher end of the market. Fortunately, we are a four bed, two bath. But we do have a ranch home right here that is perfect. This one is, uh, again, even has a one car attached garage, three bed, two bath, closed at 134. So that's great, that's a great comp right there. Um, we've got this one contingent at 144. This is also, you can see type one story, so we know it's a ranch, four bed, two bath. This is also great because I'm, cons I'm considerably less than this uh, 144. And then we've got some split levels, split level, split level. Um, and then we go into this one story right here, which I think this was a different town. Yes, Homewood. So I wouldn't use that. I'm really focused on using properties that are within the same uh, zip code. If we're on a borderline it may be okay, but some appraisers are really strict on not using homes that are sold outside of that uh, that specific town. So just be aware of that. I'm going to include this three bed, one and a half bath, 149 contingent. I know it's a split level, but I'm really just including this in my comp package based on the price. This is listed at 149. It's a three bed. We're a four bed. This is one and a half baths. We are two full bath. So if this is going to sell anywhere near that, again, that's just going to prove my value uh, that much more. I may include this three bed, two bath. Again, I know it's a split level, but I don't have a ton of ranches. Split level, split level. These are all split levels. And then I've got my uh, my two, my contingent ranch, my close. So I've only got one closed, but I still have a pretty good case right here to show the appraiser a snapshot of what's going on in this area. So I'm gonna gather that and let's see, I'll include this one. I'll go advanced. This is how I send the appraiser comps. Well, supplemental. I like this because it includes the map. It's got the number of all of the properties, including our property and then it has all the details and the pictures for every property so I like this because it's a super easy way to uh, to read the comps and I'll save that and we're good also, you want to watch out for, in some marketplaces, let's see, I'll go back. There's going to be comps that you're going to want to make sure you tell the appraiser to not use, right? In the event that it was some sort of distress sale, it was a short sale, it was a foreclosure, any insight that you have on your specific market, it is also just as important to show them what comps not to use and why you didn't use them. So um, usually it's pretty self-explanatory. The, the appraiser is not gonna use a foreclosure when the subject property was fully rehabbed. But again, some marketplaces are a little bit interesting and 
there may have been a motivated seller or motivated sale that the appraiser may not see from just looking at the pictures. So make sure you can spot that out to them. The other thing that we do is we create an update sheet for the property. This outlines anything that was done specifically again this home was a rehab so what was done in the renovation if you're selling a traditional sale it's still okay to put or create a, a update sheet with items that have been done in the last even 10 years um, if there was anything super super major maybe there was all new windows and the windows have a 30-year warranty I think that's okay but most importantly, you want to put things that were done in the last five years as that's going to really be pertinent to, uh, to the appraiser and making sure that he really sees and understands why the property was sold for what it was sold for. Because if you've got a laundry list of updates or repairs on a traditional sale, it kind of puts that value a little bit more into perspective. When I first started doing this, I was putting a price next to each of these line items. I do not do that anymore. I do not feel that if I paid $3,000 or $10,000 for a furnace, that that should have any impact on the value of the property. Again, I think it's very um, debatable on what if somebody just overpaid right for a repair or an update so I don't put any prices um, next to the line items but I do create this spec sheet or update sheet for the appraiser so that they can see I put all this together I send the appraiser an email and then the next step would be meeting the appraiser out at the property also with a printed version of this handing that to him and saying listen do you have any questions on on uh, the property let me know if you see any issues with value or or any issues um, in terms of repairs you know please let me know here's my card here's my email my phone number you know shoot me a message I've had great success with doing that um, most of the appraisers that we meet at the property are super cool but just let them do their job help them out especially if it's FHA Show them where the attic access is. If there's a crawl space, show them where the crawl space is. Show them where the panel is. Typically, they're supposed to be taking pictures of all those items. So go ahead and have the house, all the lights on, everything, all the doors are open, everything ready to go so that he can fly through. These guys get paid on completion of an appraisal. Typically, the good appraisers are doing anywhere from two to four sometimes a day so they want to be in and out they don't want to mess around um, also if you have a copy of the survey that's also helpful for them um, and even if you had maybe some generic uh, versions of plans um, most of these uh, appraisers that are doing FHA appraisals need to do some sort of home or room sketch so if maybe you've already got the Matterport sketch, give that to him with the room dimensions so it can make his job that much easier. So that's it. If you guys have any questions, always let me know. We've had great success. In the event that you do have a low appraisal, you can dispute that if you have data to show otherwise. If there's no data, it's hard to dispute the value. That's a conversation that I have with my seller day one or at time of getting a contract if they want to list significantly higher because their updates were really nice that's fine but we still need data to show the appraiser that the home is worth what the contract price is also keep in mind that the uh, appraisers do get a copy of the contract so they know what the contract price is most appraisals most appraisals are coming in at contract price I think that's kind of funny, but go figure. Um, and that's it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next lesson.